I asked two of my favorite YouTubers to go through the history of Games Workshop to figure out which is the best model from each century. Hey everyone, welcome to Squidmore Miniatures. I'm Emil, and the last six months have been quite hard to do collaborations for obvious uh, pandemic reasons. But with me on the other side of the tiny pond, I have the guy with the golden voice, Guy from Midwinter Minis. Hey, Guy. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> and from the other side of the world, uh, we have our own hobby's own koala. It's Trent from Miscast. <laughs> What's up, Trent? Hello, hello. So together with these two fellas, we've gone through the past 40 years of Games Workshop history, gone through thousands of miniatures and dozens of catalogs to find out which are the best miniatures from Games Workshop history. And we can only select one miniature from each decade, so it's really gonna be like the best of the best miniatures. And these selections are, of course, 100% objective. That's sarcasm if you don't know. So I guess we'll just uh, get started. Also, before we get started, in the comment section, let us know which ones are your favorite from each decade so we can compare up later which ones are the best figures. Uh, it's ours, of course, but we want to know which one you think anyway. So let's start in the beginning. In the 80s, cool. we had so many new miniatures coming out. In 1983, the first version of Warhammer Fantasy was released, and four years later, in 1987, we had Warhammer 40,000 and Rogue Trader. And my favorite, of course, is from the best of all factions and if you follow me on twitter or instagram you already probably know which one i'm gonna say it's the space orc dreadnought it's such a wonderful miniature i very much approve well done good choice <laughs> <laughs> it's very dumb i approve <laughs> very dumb what are you talking about <laughs> i don't know it's such a cool kit because all of the parts you can like add on and build it how high you want so you could select to make it like a tiny football or you could make it to this big sort of coca-cola can with like a goblin sticking out of the top it's just such a fantastic sculpt and miniature i just love his little crab claws they're so cool <laughs> snippy snips so for my choice for the 80s i went with the imperial inquisitor in terminator armor with digital weapons and bionic leg <laughs> to and use its bionic name. leg yeah, yeah. Oh. It's got a pig leg. Yeah, pretty That's much. Awesome. Space pirate, pig leg. Amazing. That's awesome. So this model was from 1989, so it just squeezed in before the 90s. Um, and it's it's quirky, it's fun, the odd proportions. You know, its head is too big, it's too low, but it's so cool for me. Uh, I just, this blew my mind when I saw it when I was a little kid. And bizarrely, they still make Terminators in this sort of proportion now with the big heads and the low heads. So it kind of still fits into the modern look of things even though it's like 31 years old. Yeah, but he's got like a story to tell as well. It's not just, you know, a miniature that's like a little toy soldier. He's got a bionic leg, he's got an angry, weird face. He's got an accusatory pointing finger with his power fist. You know, he's, Ooh. he's, there's some attitude there. Yeah, I just love how menacing he looks. And I just yeah. want to cut off the leg and use it for something else, <laughs> just because it's so cool. All right, so I went with Pink Horrors, which I think are like, the demon model ever like they're my favorite and these ones from the 80s are like particularly grotesque with all their faces and stuff but i just see all the conversion possibilities with them just they're awful but in the best way and the best thing about all of them is that they just have like a ball and then the face is on mm. the ball, and then it's arms in different poses and different uh. grim faces. It's just amazing. Uh, I was going to say, Trent, you can definitely see the influence of your new little Nurgle kit bashy stuff in these, yeah. uh, or uh, rather, the other 100%. way around, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. the faces of these remind me so much of the one, uh, the Greater Demon that you did. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, 100%, that was the inspiration. And I just remember, like, the old rule books and stuff with them. And I just, as a kid, I was like, these are so weird. And I can't <laughs> comprehend why they're so awful, but- But perfect. You know, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Let's jump on to the 90s. And uh, uh, a lot of things happened in the 90s. I think Games Workshop started doing a lot more plastic kits, uh, but still a lot of the characters were in metal. Uh, but I think Trent, maybe you can continue. Um, I went with the classic Wardancer 
but the Warhammer Quest version. You bastard! <laughs> <laughs> the best pose ever. No, you um, took the same I should <laughs> I was gonna take that- <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's just so cool, um, and uh, and the uh, box art. That's yeah, yes. so brilliant, so, so brilliant. brilliant. So the, uh, so I'm I'm just gonna I'm gonna hijack this as well because I selected <laughs> the same one. <laughs> but I mean, like, it it really it's released in like 1995, and how mm. many figures were released then? It's gonna be like just a couple of hundred that year. And what are the odds that we select the same one? <laughs> not even from this like it's not even from warhammer it's from board game. yeah warhammer. <laughs> I, I, well I, i'm a wood elf player and this yeah. this guy was in the six ed rule book and i yeah. always remember like this guy's so cool why can't i get him <laughs> yeah i mean that model is beautiful the pose is incredibly dynamic and it's quite timeless in a way definitely uh my choice uh, is pretty much the exact opposite. It's one of the least dynamic <laughs> models Games Workshop have ever made, but it is, I think, the most iconic, which is the Space Marine, the Monopose uh, second edition box set version. <laughs> I can't understand that I didn't think of this. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, the. I think it's the best choice, probably hands down, because uh, that, that figure is Games Workshop. Yeah, yeah, I mean, this just defines Warhammer or Warhammer 40,000 for me. It's from 1993, obviously, uh, and, you know, without a doubt, there are better sculpts, there are better models, more dynamic models, more interesting models, even, as you've shown, from the same time period. But just nothing really compares to this in terms of, like, the iconic look and the design. Uh, It's really simple, it's understated, and uh, it's what got me into Warhammer, you know? One of my friends had got it on the front cover of a white dwarf, and I was like, what is that? And uh, yeah, it was all downhill <laughs> from there. <laughs> Some kind of magic. <laughs> ah, it's amazing. I think you made uh, the, the right choice. I have an honorary mention. And it's uh, Thunderhawk from uh, 1997. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It's uh, like 200 kilos of <laughs> just Very pure cool. metal. It's such a legendary piece. It's one of those that I kind of wish that I had, but uh, I would probably never get because I don't think there's many copies of it. So, 2000, uh, this is the decade where I didn't play Warhammer. I stopped playing, I think, around 2000, 2001. Started playing Metal instead of uh, playing with Metal. Uh, (laughs) What's your selections? Yeah, my story is very, very similar to yours, Emil. I kind of stopped uh, playing Warhammer around about the same time, early 2000s. And uh, I have to say, even though I'd been out of the hobby for about seven or eight years by this point, when the Assault on Black Reach box set came out, I saw it in the shop window of a games workshop and I was like, oh man, this is me getting back into it. I can feel it. (laughs) And the thing, the model that really, really caught my eye was the war boss, the orc war boss. Just comparatively to every other orc model I'd seen before that, it just looked so furious and dynamic and like the hair was blowing everywhere and the huge power claw and the massive gun and just a big angry face. It just looked so cool. And I don't know a single like Warhammer 40,000 player, even if they don't play orcs, that doesn't have this model <laughs> if they played at the time. <laughs> yeah, th- this model was so significant, I think, in, in my hobby because this is when like this was the peak time of my hobby with all my young friends getting into it. And this was like the model that everyone stood around and, and got excited about opening the box. And, and that's why I, I was really excited seeing, seeing this one in your selection. I think that's uh, such a cool thing that I had the same experience, but with the metal one, like, I don't know if it's eight years before or 10 years before, I can't remember. Uh, but uh, I was playing Warhammer Fantasy and just like orcs in general, I thought were cool, but this specific model was like, I'm gonna buy it even though I don't play 40k, just because I want that specific model. I uh, I picked the the giant, the multi kit giant, um, which is such an iconic model for me for the time that um, I first sort of really seriously got into the hobby. It was plastered all over the website. Um, it was it was in every White Dwarf magazine and every battle report. And the kit really holds up 
now. There's so many cool gubbins to glue on things and hack things up. So much potential and I've used it in all my Nurgle builds so it's just cool. And it even comes with its own scenic base. This is such a classic piece and if, I feel like everyone who played Fantasy or Age of Sigmar has one piece from this kit on like a scenic base in a conversion or in their army or had when they were a kid because this kit was just so so ahead of its time both in sculpt and in uh, in quality i would say yeah. and they're so fun to to play with too the rules are so silly they jump up and down they they shove models into bags they fall over and trample either your enemies or your own models it's cool <laughs> in in the 2000s i had like quite a few figures that i really enjoyed even though i, I didn't play myself one of them is like Ashog the Slaughterer, you had Lord Croak coming out. But personally for me, when I came back and I looked at, at the early 2000s to, to, to like mid 2000s, the, the one that stood out for me was Archeon on Horse. Uh, it's such a dynamic pose, it's like cast in metal and the quality is just so good. It's one of these figures that I still think, I probably think this one looks better than the new Chaos uh, models that came out the other year. Uh, it's just such a, it's a fantastic figure, I think. Came with a scenic base as well. Is that your paint Super job cool. in the picture? Yeah. That's, oh. uh, <laughs> that's very good. <laughs> uh, Show off. Tiny bit. <laughs> <laughs> no, but in, in all honesty, this uh, I painted this as a commission. It's like one of the, one of the first commission jobs that I did. It's got that really menacing um, dynamic silhouette to it. Yeah, so it's, like, I think if it's, you can't see the model itself, it looks powerful. Yeah, cool. yeah, it's 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 uh, you know the Napoleon crosses the Alps uh, mm. painting. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I think the, yeah, yeah, the pose yeah. is pretty much ripped from that one. Napoleon was the first Chaos Warrior. It's a well-known yeah, fact. <laughs> <laughs> Up to 2010, you can find like all of the catalogs of all the figures, all the miniatures. But after that, I think a lot of it was just released digitally and it's hard to find sort of the, the mail order catalogs that, that they used to have. But yeah, I have one favorite and the story of this is just me coming back to Warhammer. And I went to the website and I wanted to look for Warhammer Fantasy because I wanted to buy some Warhammer Fantasy stuff and I couldn't find it. I'm like, where am I supposed to go? And I press the button where it says Age of Sigmar and like the first figure that shows up is Alariel on the huge freaking dung beetle. <laughs> <laughs> so dynamic, like the way she flies on the beetle, it has these like brambles that grows out of the beetle and she's just standing like with one toe on the, on the wood pieces. It's like she's floating in air. It's amazing, such a nice piece. I think that's when we sort of saw the shift with Games Workshop um, when they sort of went with that big monster, um, sort of big display piece style mm -hmm. that every army sort of has now. My choice for the 2010s period is the most favorite model I've ever built. They just had so much fun with it, and that is the Orc Gorkonaut slash yes. Morkonaut, <laughs> which uh, was released in 2014. Yeah, uh, it's and the I, fridge on wheels. Yeah, but it, it's legs. amazing as a kit to build. It is absolutely amazing, and like I love big mechs, and I cannot lie, uh, I love big stompy <laughs> robots. I love orcs. So this is like the perfect combo all in one. Yeah, as I said, it's like one of the most fun building processes I've had with any miniature. The kit is just so much fun to build. Also, it's like literally made of big claws and guns. <laughs> what more do you want? Yeah, I, I see a theme here between you and me. It's like orcs. <laughs> and then <laughs> me and Trent, we have the wood elves. Yeah. So. yeah. This was a hard one because obviously so many cool models have come out in this time. But just recently, 2019, I think easily the coolest set of models that Games Workshop's ever released is Gobapalooza. And everything is just so dumb and over the top and fun and silly and it just makes me excited to it's paint amazing. and play. Amazing. Yeah. Great choice, really great yeah, choice. Yeah, really, really great miniatures, I love them. Especially the one in the middle. He's just oh, having <laughs> yeah, a great yeah, time. It's brilliant. This is incredibly recent. This was only shown less than a week ago. Uh, 
in one of the Warhammer previews, but it is the new Underworld's Chameleon Skink, which is part of the new Seraphon Warband. I think it's called Otopatl. And uh, yeah, man, it's just so gorgeous. But when I first saw it, I thought it was like a trumpet and he had like a little bagpipe toad strapped to his side. And even, even though I know that's not what it is, that forevermore, that is what it's gonna to be to me. This is, a, uh, this is another, another good example of that really nice silhouette that the model has, that mm. it looks so dynamic and it would look really good on the tabletop. The paint job as well on this one just lifts it. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely gonna buy that more band for sure. That's uh, I think it's a no brainer. Yeah, yeah. Trent, yeah. you go. I don't think they're out yet, but I went with the new bigger giants that are coming out. The big titan size ones. Why do you guys pick better miniatures than I do? <laughs> I really like the potential that it opens up, being able to slap things onto it and convert it. Basically, I just want a giant Nurgle giant. <laughs> You see the one that you sent us, it has the, the turtle from the Idneth Deepkin, like that uh, turtle's scale on his belly. Mm. Ah, That's so amazing. cool. So yeah, my selection, obviously not as go good as yours. I was gonna pick goblins, but then I realized they came out last year. So Lumineth Realm Lords, the, the most hated new army, I think. Uh, <laughs> like that they mix high elves with cows <laughs> and like I, I kind of get it and I'm not a huge fan of like the regular army dudes but this giant Avalinor the Stoneheart King and then you have Alarith Spirit of the Stone Mountain there I think this is a fantastic figure as we talked about earlier like this era of having this like one huge centerpiece on the table that just draws the attention I think it's uh, even if I like the giant more I think it still deserves to be on this list as a fantastic figure yeah, it's an amazing model. You can't disagree that it's an amazing model, even if you have, uh, you know, aesthetically uh, different <laughs> ideas about what is good and what is bad. It's still very impressive to look at. Um, I wouldn't. Are you personally... telling me that it's ugly? It's the <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's hideous. <laughs> sure, it's hideous. Uh, I would really like to see it um, painted in a different way, just to see the potential that that model could have. I think like a darker scheme would look crazy. Yeah. Right. So, so my idea, if I would have done them, I would have painted them like wood elves. So you have like browns, you have greens, and you have maybe some gold in there. I think that would have been amazing. Uh, well guys, uh, thank you so much for joining me and uh, figuring out which the best figures from Games Workshop history is. Uh, it was so much fun hanging out and just talking. Uh, if mm -hmm. people don't know who these guys are, Go check out their YouTube channels. I put them in the uh, video description. They're the best. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Emil, for having us. It's been a pleasure. And if you enjoyed this video, please uh, consider subscribing because I release videos about hobby and miniature painting every week. And if you want to support this channel, there's a few ways you can do that. Either by going to my website, squidmar.com, where I've listed all of the stuff that I use in my videos, whether it's uh, paints, brushes, uh, or the cameras or and lamps that I use for recording. And if you have a few dollars to spare, please consider joining my Patreon like all of these amazing people. If you join there, you support this channel and also you get to join me and all of the 400 patrons that we have on the Discord chat where we talk about miniature painting, life, hobby, or just having fun in general. A massive thanks to my top patrons, Daniel, Mark andre Richard, Jonas, Christopher, Brandon, Guy, and Brett. You guys are beasts. And with that said, friends, have a great day. Bye-bye.